Hi, my name is Jolie McCrary, and in this video, I'll explain how psychologists use measurement tools to interpret the data that they get from their research. So, suppose that a psychologist was gathering IQ scores, and maybe they were gathering IQ scores from high school students, and they were just wanting to understand the population of students and where their intelligence is. So, if every single student in a school was tested, maybe you would have a thousand data points to look at. And to understand your population of students, it would just be really hard to get a list of data points of IQ scores and try to make sense of it. So there's a bunch of different tools we can use to understand the data that we would get from our research. So some of the most common ones that students typically know of before class are measures of central tendency, which these are measurement tools that help us summarize whole groups of data. It gives us kind of like a holistic look at a data set. So um, one of the ones that, that is most common that students typically ask about a lot after a test is, Mrs. McCrary, what is the average? So that is one way that we can understand a bunch of scores. We can think about the average where we take all of the scores and add them up and then divide them by the number of scores. And that gives us an average score. Um, there is the median and the median is the score that if we took all of our scores and lined them up chronologically and ordered them that way and then we moved all the way until we found the number in the center, that would be the median. And sometimes I think students are like, well, why do we need to know that? But the median score is really important. Here's an example. So um, suppose I was looking at the incomes of a local area and I'm curious to know, um, you know, just more about the people that live there. The mean, I, the mean could tell me something, but the mean could be skewed by maybe there is one person that lives in that community who makes, you know, three million dollars a year. And that one person is really skewing the average because they are such a high wage earner. It's kind of making the average appear that people make more in that city when most people don't make three million dollars a year. So that's where median can be really helpful if we take the highest and then we order them all the way down to the lowest and then we work our way and we can find the number in the middle, maybe that's the number we're actually you know, interested in when we're looking at income levels in an area. Maybe we really wanna know the median income level, maybe not so much the average because the average can be skewed by maybe a really high wage earner or a really low wage earner. Mode is another data collection tool that helps us understand and summarize a whole data set. Mode is actually really important too. I think sometimes students who, um, when they take a test in class, they wanna know the average, but I think really they would like to know the mode also. Here's a great example of that. So if I'm looking at AP test scores and that score from one to five, then, hold on, sorry guys. So if we have AP scores that score uh, a range from one to five, and I, I have all of these scores that I'm looking at, and I have some fives and some fours and some threes and some twos and some ones. And, um, you know, I think I would really like to know the number that occurs most often because maybe, like I said earlier, the mean is making it appear that maybe, you know, maybe I have uh, several ones and I've got several fives, but and so it's pulling maybe that average closer to a three, but what if I had, out of 100 students, 85 people who scored four? That, that would be the mode, the most, the, or the most commonly occurring number is four. And that would be something really valuable to know that, wow, most of the students got a four, even though the average appears to be a three, most students scored a four. That's where a mode would be really important. So those measures of central tendency help us summarize our data in, in just one, one measurement. So mean, median or mode kind of helps us get a bigger picture of a big, huge um, set of data. The next measurement tool we can use are measures of variation. And measures of variation help us understand the distance between our data points. Um, specifically, there are two that we use in class, range and standard deviation. So range is showing us the distance between the highest and the lowest. And so that's really helpful. So if we're using income again, for example, to help us know just how spread apart my highest wage earner is from my lowest wage earner. That could be really valuable information. The, the, the last one is standard deviation. And standard deviation is the measure of spread. So not just the highest from the lowest, 
but all my data points. Um, we can look at the spread of all our data points um, and it helps us understand we can even compare data points in between um, our whole data set with standard deviation and it can help us un understand how far away one data point is from another data point or how far away one data point is from the mean and so it just simply is the measure of of spread and so we'll get to that here in a little bit so let's do some practice um, what I want you to do is I want you to get a piece of paper and I would like for you to pause this and I'd like for you to find mean median and mode of this data set so if you are ready to check your answers um, for the mean, the average, if you found average by adding all of these number sets together and then dividing by the number of numbers, then you should have gotten 100.55 or that you got that by rounding up from 100.54. The median, which if you ordered them from highest to lowest and then you found the number in the middle was also 100. And then if you found the number that occurred most often, that was also 100 as well. I actually chose some data points that would possibly be um, IQ scores so that we could use that for um, a later example. So let's go to measures of variation. Measures of variation help us understand distance. And um, so can you find the range? I'd like you to uh, find the highest and lowest score and subtract them to find the distance from the highest and the lowest score. So if you did that, you should have found that your range is 63 data, there's 63 data points in between the highest and the lowest score. So now let's talk about standard deviation because this is the one that students usually need some explanation on. Um, I would say the students that have some background knowledge are students that have taken statistics before. So for AP Psychology, you will not have to calculate standard deviation, but you should know what it is and you should understand um, what this measurement tool is for and how it works. So for standard deviation, let's start with this chart and we'll kind of just talk through what this data set is showing and what it is doing and how this leads up to standard deviation. So this chart represents IQ scores. And so I'll kind of talk through this just briefly and then we'll move to standard deviation and how we can use that as a tool. So you can see along the y-axis that goes vertically here, the y-axis would be like the number of people who have that score, that IQ score. And then along the x-axis would be the actual score itself. And as you can see, we've got these bar graphs and then we've got this line that kind of follows the height of the bars. So what this is representing is how many people score each individual score. So you can see if we're starting on the x-axis here, there are very few people that score an IQ score below 50. That would be a very low IQ score. And then as you can see, the bars start to rise and more and more people start to score higher and higher IQ scores until we get to this point of 100. This is the mode. Can you see how this is the tallest bar on the graph? This mode shows us that this is the number that occurs most often. When people take IQ scores, 100 is the score that occurs most often. And we could actually um, take all of our scores and average them, and it is also the average score. And you could even tell if we, um, we have this ordered in chronological order here, we could find that this is also the middle. So this is the mean, median, and the mode. When that occurs and you have this nice like high part in the middle on your distribution and then it gets lower on the sides, we call that a bell curve or a normal distribution. And this is really typical when we um, collect data, we tend to find that more, more people score around average and that tends to be the mode as well and the median. So as you can see, IQ score, it starts to be fewer and fewer amount of people who are scoring this higher and higher and higher ends. And, and out here in the extremes, we have fewer and fewer people scoring really, really high scores like 148. We have fewer people out here. And so this is really typical when we take a population of people and test them, it tends to look like this. And that's what we call a normal curve where we have the mean is also the mode and most oftenly scored score and the number in the middle. So let's talk about standard deviation. 
So for standard deviation, it is a measurement tool. I think of it kind of like units. It's a unit of measurement. And so when we are looking at scores and we are looking at them on a bell curve where most people are falling around average and this is the most often scored score, um, we can use standard deviation to help understand how spread apart our data is. So what we have here, you can see that we have um, three standard deviations to the left or below average. So our line in the center is showing us the average score, which in IQ is 100. And so we have three units of measurement below. And then we have three units of measurement above. We will always have three units of measurement regardless of how spread apart your data points. We are always going to have three measurements above and three measurements below, and we call those measurements standard deviation. Now, just depending on, you know, if you have, like for our, our IQ example, our lowest score was about 50-ish and our highest score was about 150-ish. Um, if, if we have data points that are even farther apart, maybe our lowest score is a one and our highest score is a thousand, our standard deviations are going to be wider and more spread apart, but we'll still have three of them. It's just a measurement tool. So we have three measurements or units below and three measurements or units above, and we call those standard deviations. And so um, what will happen when we're looking at standard deviations, regardless of how spread apart it is, we still have three above and three below. Um, what will happen is we will end up with 68% of people will fall one standard deviation below and above, and so we will have a little over 60%, um, almost 70%, 68% of people are going to fall right there around average. And so then if we're looking, if we're going outwards like this, you can see uh, if we go all the way three units, three standard deviations below and three standard deviations above, you're gonna encompass almost all of your data points. But you notice there's this tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of people, those are out there in the extremes. Not many scores are gonna fall three standard deviations above the mean. So what standard deviations do for us is it helps us understand, um, it's a measurement tool. So if I were to say that um, a student scored two standard deviations above the mean, could you look at that and find it on the graph? you would see that that data point would fall all the way out here. That's pretty far above average. And so it's a measurement tool for us to understand how spread apart our data is and how spread apart our data is from average. So let me give you an example with IQ. So you can see, you can see IQ represented here with um, our normal distribution. You can see there is 100, there is our average, and you can see our standard deviations down here. We've got three above and we have three below. So with the data points of IQ, our lowest scores are around 50 and our highest scores are around 150. So we have three standard deviations, which are three measurements above and below. And so what happens is our standard deviation, since we have three units of measurement, end up being 15 points. So 15 points from 100 puts us at 115. That's one standard deviation above. 15 more points puts us at 130. And so you will never have to calculate standard deviation, but in the example of IQ, if our data is from 50 to 150, then our standard deviation is roughly 15 data points apart. So, but if our, if our data is even, you know, more spread apart, it might be larger. Our, our units, our one standard deviation might be larger than 15 points. Um, but it will always be those three standard deviations or those three units. I also like looking at it from this perspective because the person who created this um, display did a really good job of they showed the 68% are falling one standard deviation above and below, but they also broke it down in half. So they have showed us here that 34% um, just fall one standard deviation above. So it kind of gives you an understanding of just how many data points fall in between each standard deviation. So this is also a really good representation to help you understand um, if your data set is closer together, like, you know, 1 and 100 versus 1 and 2,000. You will still have those three standard deviations. They just might be closer together, and they might be each unit or each standard deviation might not be as many points. So for standard deviation for IQ, 
one standard devi deviation is 15 points. Whereas if, if your data set was a larger amount of numbers, it just might be your standard deviation might be farther apart. So this kind of gives you that idea and you can see that visually a little bit better with those colors. So what you need to know for standard deviation is that it is the spread of your data points. So I hope that is helpful. Good luck.